content to be accessed by the Chinese. You saw how much we got banned on TikTok, right? Imagine that. But in America, so much more different. Why? I've come across studies like that. The Chinese are only able to see um, educational content. There's no twerking. And he, as for these guys, and then you see like a 70 year old uh, guy like dressing like a woman and just twerking towards a stuff. You know, it was, uh, these are clips that I would see when, when, when TikTok first started up. Now it's a little bit different. It is directly correlated with the algorithm. So but your before, algorithm is probably halal for the most sorry? part. Your algorithm is probably halal because it's... I don't know. I, I don't have TikTok. I, I don't use TikTok. Yeah, I don't have an either. active TikTok account. Either. Remember, we said this last time wrong. Yeah. Um, but, and then you've got people behaving like this because of what they keep seeing. They normalize it. When you keep looking at something, you begin to normalize it in your day-to-day -day life. And then the people see it, they get shocked because they're not used to seeing that. But because you've been looking at it all the time, you've been hearing something throughout your day, you end up behaving like that. I used to see myself back in the day when I would listen to music, I would start acting like them. And then my dad would see me walking on the road, trying to do these break dancing moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a young kid. You could break dance? No, 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 no. <laughs> my point is like, because of what I was listening at, listening yeah. to, and what I kept on looking at, I would start doing these movements just as I'm walking. And as a young 11 year old, 12 year old, my dad would see this and he would tell, tell me off for doing so. But yeah, it affects you. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, well, they have that term noor, right? N-O-O-R, it's that, people said that to me after I reverted, like, oh, you could see the noor in his face, where you're, if you're surrounded by halal when you're praying and you have good thoughts, it, it reflects on your face. But if you have ugly thoughts, you're around ugly people, you're doing ugly things, it starts to grow and wear and tear on your body. Face. Like, we have a tradition, uh, the cousin of Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings actually said this, right? He said, Inna lil hasanati diya'an lil wajh. The good deed that you do, it begins to show on your face. Wa inna lil sayyati dhulmatan lil wajhi. And as for the bad deed, it begins to put darkness on your face. Does that make sense? It begins to show on your face. What's the word for nor, for negative nor? Nor uh, means light. You can say maybe darkness, right? Okay. But do you think yeah, that I'm all sure most people uh, of course, we have something called nasheed, which doesn't have musical instruments. We've I love nasheed. We've been prohibited from uh, musical instruments, right? So nasheed are permissible, providing three conditions are met. Number one, it doesn't have any haram lyrics. I think everyone knows what haram means now, right? Yes. Uh, you guys popularized it. Yeah. Um, within the non-Muslim community. Yeah. Uh, um, providing it doesn't have any musical instruments. Secondly, um, that it doesn't have any haram lyrics, right? Uh, and thirdly, you don't believe that this is something that is getting you closer to Allah, because otherwise it would become something that's an innovative practice, right? Uh, it's like an ada, it's a normal, uh, you know, cultural tradition that people have had, uh, that they would always listen to. Uh, and because of it, it is permissible until proven otherwise, in that sense. Do you have a favorite nasheed? Mine's uh, Yaqub Rubin. Huh? Yaqurubin. I love the sheet. I love the sheet. What do you mean the I think it's called Yaqurubin. But yeah, it, that's the lyrics. So. Yeah, uh, do I don't actually go out my way to listen to the sheets, but every now and again, I see some of the brothers, they may put it uh, behind some of the... Uh, the edits? Yeah, behind the edits and everything. Yeah. You feel like you're going to go to war. Like it's like a battle cry sometimes. But is all music bad? That was the argument from my dad. He's like, music uplifts my soul. It makes me feel better. What, what if it's like the music goes up? How does it feel after that? He goes back to normal. Now, and then he needs it again. And he goes back again. Have even none of this stuff that is not through avenues that are godly is ever going to nourish your soul. Right? You need to understand that. That's why I said before as well. Right? You need uh, an Islam in your life. And once you have a religion, you will see yourself, inshallah ta'ala, doing the right thing. And once you do the right thing, you'll feel that spiritual nourishment that people are crying out for. And sins have an impact on your heart, even Muslims, right? They use the exact same argument. When I listen to music, I feel good. Like, okay, are you going to be listening to music 24 hours a day? How do you feel after that when you're alone, right? None of this can actually nourish your soul. Most people testify to that, right? Is there a reason why specifically music is the voice for Satan? How do you see, how do you see people behaving after they listen to music? Exactly. Right? Again, like we can go into finding the wisdoms behind it. But bro, at the end of the day, once you accept that Allah is your Lord, right? And He is your creator. And whatever He's telling you to do is in your best interest. 
you'll be ready to submit food. Right. What about fat? What are the what are the benefits of fasting? What's the why does Allah tell us to fast for thirty days every year? Okay, so as we mentioned before, right? Um, when you think about it, you're withholding from food and drink, right? And also sexual intercourse, you're disciplining your soul, right? And as we mentioned, this is not the main objective of Ramadan. In the Quran, the verse, verse that came down, and it's a, that speaks about fasting, right at the end, Allah tells us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may acquire piety. You may acquire righteousness. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we stay away from looking at haram, listening to haram, eventually you will become someone who is righteous because he stayed away that which is going to lead him to the haram. When you think about it now, right? A lot of the haram that we do, would you agree that it eventually uh, originates from the eyes, originates from the ears, originates from your tongue? Does that make sense? So in Ramadan, you're holding that back. So once you train that, hopefully after that, inshallah, that you'll continue it. And then you'll see yourself doing all sorts of great things, right? Uh, being more closer to Allah and so on and so forth. Yeah. What have you noticed? Uh, you, so you travel a lot, you, must meet, you mostly meet with the youth? Or do, do older people come too? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination. It's a combination? It's a combination. 